pasting in, boom. Like what? How is this actually a thing? How can Windows Defender not pick this up? Jeez. There's two definitions of fileless malware. First definition is malicious code that works directly within a computer's memory instead of the hard drive. Second definition is fileless malware, which is basically malicious activity used by native tooling. I don't know how to do the first one, so let's do the second one. And I think that's about it. I've been dabbling into the world of file S malware. Okay, I promise I'm not gonna keep saying that, but file S malware is basically encompassing all of this native tooling. So living off the land, as the technique is known, is using programs or executables native to the operating system. And attackers deploy these throughout the attack chain so they don't have to bring their own tools and leaving a possible footprint for detection opportunities. Now, native files are still used, so the whole name is kind of misleading, fileless malware. Living off the of land binaries are binaries or executables used to conduct these operations. When thinking of LOL bins, think of native Windows applications. So in the Windows operating ecosystem, you have Test Scheduler, PowerShell, and CertUtil.exe for certificates. Let's exemplify three basic LOL bins commonly deployed throughout and used in cyber attack chains making this a file-less malware attack. Okay, I promise it's the last time I'll say it. Uh, and what better case to show this in a crappy Python dropper application, but first let's overview three different programs, binaries, how they work and different techniques that are used for native defense evasion. Now I have four minute section of me typing in commands. That's it. There is a really cool resource that lives on GitHub called LOBIS, basically a compiled archive of various different programs and binaries as well as commands used. The first LOL binary is certutil.exe, basically handling Windows SSL TLS certificates. So certutil.exe and this command here, as you can see, we are downloading a file, putting it into the public folder. Now, why would you want to do this or need to do this with this utility? No one knows. And that is what makes Windows well, Windows. So as you can see, I have this hard-coded IP address. Uh, yeah, I'm running my good old Kali Linux machine as my C2 server. I have a few files here as test files. So what this here is simulating is a very basic way of getting initial access into your machine. So if you can somehow compile a binary, you can execute this binary and boom, enter online. And as you can see here, we get a text file. Now I could easily set this as a PowerShell dropper to establish initial access through one command. Really cool. Now, why would you be able to do this? I really truly don't know. Yeah, I don't know. MSHTA.exe. This is a common binary used for defense evasion. So this is a utility that creates a Microsoft HTML application, HTA. Basically, they're standalone applications that execute using the same models as and technologies as Internet Explorer, but it's outside the browser, which means it bypasses browser security. So. MSHTA can be used as a proxy to execute arbitrary code without, of course, triggering defenses. And you can craft an HTA file or supply an inline shell command either way. So here, again, downloading from my C2 server, hitting that enter key. As we can see, we have a PowerShell session up and running. And as you can, it's this desktop user. I think I print the host name. I'm not really sure. So basically, uh, yeah, that's that's it. So looking at the contents of the HTML application file that we're dropping, basically it's just a blank shell running the who am I command. So this allows you for arbitrary code execution. And as you can see within all three of these binaries, I'm running them with Windows Defender fully enabled. So it's just downloading arbitrary files, which is well, it's a Windows thing to do. All right, the next example is remote code execution. So the cmstp.exe is a command line program used to install connection manager service profiles. This service can basically be used to load profiles which connect to remote networks. And these profiles are called .inf. .inf is an installation information file. It can be supplied as a parameter into this binary, which allows you to download a template um, now, these INF files can be infected with various different malicious commands, effectively creating a remote code execution. As you can see, I used our first binary, the certutil, to download a that bad INF file. This file contains a malicious command. So if we hit enter here, you're not going to see anything. And this is because we are doing a no-show on the terminal here. If we take a look into our 
bad.inf file here. You're going to see that we had this command run. Uh, specifically, we're creating cmd.exe, dbuda. It did not pop up, oddly enough. In the real world, you could supply any command here. I mean, it could be downloading a backdoor, maybe another installation script, which would further infect your machine. So this is a very easy way of getting files downloaded into your environment in a defense evasion type way. Taking all three of these, I created a small crappy UI application which can trigger all three of these on the command because why not? I so didn't use ChatGPT. In the real world, of course, you wouldn't have a UI application like this. These would be used in various different elements within the supply uh, attack chain. Well, just the attack, cyber attack chain. All right, so using the powers of Python, I've compiled a small little UI application, basically taking all three of those commands that I demoed right here. Basically, all I've done is transfer this over into my Windows 11 virtual machine here. And yeah, I have a Pi installer, little executable. Of course, now this could be an actual real application, say a spoofed 7-zip Acrobat as we did in the last video. Well, it doesn't really matter. Clicking on this executable, what I'm simulating here is the spoofed commands, I guess, in an executable. And of course, you wouldn't have this little UI application. These are our little LOL bins that we have similar commands. Well, if we just go ahead and do this, I mean, literally, it downloads our little uh, application. We can deploy our PowerShell machine and Windows Defender, nothing. What's going on, Defender? So Windows Defender is not working. It's an antivirus that should be working, but these LLL bins are pretty effective. So what can we do? Well, there's a lot of things. And one of the things that we could do is implement this idea of zero trust called ring fencing. Ring fencing is all about restricting what legitimate applications can control and access. For example, if you had a 7-zip uh, little binary, it wouldn't be able to communicate with PowerShell or Excel with PowerShell. Ring fencing is a really cool technology and ThreatLocker, today's sponsor, does a really good job of showcasing how to implement ring fencing. Ring fencing essentially is all about giving users control to the applications, legitimate applications, while restricting what those applications can access. So for example, here on this graphic, QuickBooks, it's now accounting software commonly used in enterprise environments. Now, would this need to be used to access, for example, PowerShell or create a remote desktop profile? Well, of course not. And so what you can do is restrict certain capabilities and access for the program QuickBooks, and it really helps you with still having legitimate software, but also restricting what can happen. So you're just allowing essentially good operations while, well, of course, eliminating the bad. So using our executable here, this is simulating like a malicious executable. I know it's just a little UI application. Say these have embedded commands in them, which allow you to essentially create a backdoor. Uh, with Windows Defender, like we saw, nothing could happen. Into ThreatLocker, right now, I am in monitoring, meaning no policies will be applied to this device. So I'm able to execute any of these commands at my discretion. I can access Windows PowerShell from this executable, not something you would really want. Going under modules application control, here is where we can define the policies for legitimate software and the programs or executables that they can and cannot interact with. As using as an example of Adobe Acrobat here, we can drill in and we can look into the existing policy. We can see that this is currently called ring fenced. Now, what are the specific details? So Adobe Acrobat is allowed to run on all of these devices, except it's not allowed to interact with any of these particular programs. Why would Acrobat need PowerShell access? You don't need it. So if we go down to the permit with ring fence under actions, here we can control the specific executables that are not allowed. Uh, so we could add in various different other information such as the executable like certutil.exe. However, this would already be restricted because Windows PowerShell is disabled. By defining software programs that are and are not allowed, we're still empowering users to use well, whatever they want to use, but we're remediating a large amount of attacks that could happen in the background with legitimate software. Let's see this in action with our little dropper application. So going to the devices, right now I am in application control monitor mode, which means no policies are applied. So if I hit secured, deploy policies. After a few minutes running this executable, it will not work at all. So we're not gonna see that UI, it has been completely blocked. 
as we have blocked PowerShell access to even this custom application, this dropper application. Looking at our PowerShell policy here, for this application, if we look in existing policies like we did for Acrobat, we can see that I actually already added explicitly these three little executables commonly deployed for fileless attacks. You can add any application or executable here. So for example, we could do the registry if you wanted to, re to restrict this. We could do Chrome if we wanted to, because why not? Um, but it gives you a whole bunch of applications that you can control and deny access to within legitimate applications. So a really cool concept with ring fencing. The ring fencing, a really cool technique and implemented by ThreatLocker, really cool. As you can see through our demo, Windows Defender was fully enabled. Like, what the heck? What's going on, Windows Defender? But ring fencing, well, it would have you covered in this particular case. Explore more about ring fencing with ThreatLocker on their page here. I'll leave a link in the description below. And, well, that continues the exploration of fileless attacks. Hopefully you learned a little bit about fileless malware, LL bins, and the effectiveness of it, and maybe a, perhaps a convention, a remediation for ring fencing. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video and well, yeah, until the next time, have a good day.